Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1984 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today's matchup is between the Detroit Tigers and the Seattle Mariners at the Kingdom. On the mound for the Tigers today is Dan Petrie, whose record is 13-3 with a 394 ERA. And pitching for the Mariners today is Floyd Bannister, whose record is 17-13 with a 385 ERA. Okay, we won a barn burner yesterday, 2-1 to one over the Mariners. We've won four in a row. Jack Morris pitched great. Our bullpen did our gerbs. And uh, Marty Party had the game-winning RBI. George Brett hit uh, a solo shot, and that, between those two uh, runs being scored, that was all we needed. So a nice victory for the Tigers. And if we take a look at the remaining schedule and the standings, you'll see... We're four games up. So, hypothetically, if we win today's game, um, we hold our own destiny in our hands. So, if we win today uh, and we uh, are still four games up, then any combination of a Detroit win or a Red Sox loss uh, will give us the division. So... That's how close we are right now. We are knocking on the door, and we are waiting to be let in. Okay, uh, before we get started with today's game, i got to tell you a baseball story here real quick. Uh, first of all, uh, Rorick Harrison, a uh, longtime reliever in the 70s, uh, passed away a couple of days ago. I just saw the notification uh, yesterday, and just for the hell of it, I decided to do a little research on him, and the one thing that clicked in my brain is that he was on the Tigers. Like, I remember the 1978 Topps baseball card of Rorick Harrison, and so when I was looking at his Wikipedia page, I noticed that it didn't list the Tigers as one of his teams. Um, coincidentally, I was looking at some other stats of his. And I clicked on a link to an article uh, that was um, a Baltimore newspaper from 1972. And the article, I don't even know if I read, actually. But on the, uh, on the page of the newspaper that I was reading, there was an article about SEC football. And I'm, I'm getting to a point here. And... In that article, it showed the um, standings after week one of the football season. And the first place team was North Carolina. They were 1-0. And I happened to just scan the article. And whose name popped up as the quarterback for North Carolina, but Bill Paschal uh, of the Kansas City Royals. Now he's on the Philadelphia Phillies as a pitcher. We'll just visually remind you here. We're going to have a lot of visual aids in this um, in this game. Uh, so, yeah, Bill Paschal, he was the starting quarterback for uh, the North Carolina Tar Heels uh, during the uh, early 70s. So there's something that you may not have known. A um, uh, little, little bit of trivia there. Okay, so back to Rourke Harrison. So now I'm like, damn it, I know that there was a baseball card that uh, represented Rorick Harrison on the Tigers for the 1978 season. And I couldn't understand why they didn't have the stats for him on Wikipedia. So I clicked over to his baseball reference page. And on his baseball reference page, I scanned up and down um, the stat lines. And there's nothing for Detroit there. So I scroll all the way down to the transactions. And here's what happened. Rourke Harrison was signed by the Tigers as a free agent in spring training of 1977. He pitched the entire season in the minor leagues, and he pitched really well. He was 9-5 with a ERA just over 3. And then the 1978 season came, and here's the baseball card. I'm pulling it up for you right here. Here's the front and the back of the Rourke Harrison Tigers baseball card from 1978. 
And if you look at the uh, writing, um, the dialogue in the box here, it basically says that Rourke Harrison was predicted to be in the Tigers bullpen out of the uh, out of uh, the um, the the uh, spring training for 1978. Well, guess what? He didn't make it out of spring training in 1978. He actually got cut uh, on April 5th, right before the season started, and he never pitched a game for the Tigers in the major leagues, and yet they had a baseball card created for him. So I knew I wasn't crazy. I knew that card existed. I just didn't understand uh, why he did not have any Tiger stats. I just I never knew that about him. Uh, the other little uh, tidbit about Rourke Harrison is that he hit the last American League home run by an American League pitcher uh, before the DH was instituted. And uh, it was the last home run for 27 years before Bobby Witt Sr. hit a home run. Uh, also, he had 15 career total hits, and six of them were home runs. So uh, he was a home run hitter. Okay, that's all I wanted to share. R.I.P. Rorick Harrison and the mystery of the 1978 Tigers Tops baseball card. Let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel. This is an important game. Now, the uh, Mariners skipped their number two starter. Um, I forgot. Uh, it's um, the other Floyd. Floyd Yeomans to go to Floyd Bannister. So I'm curious how this will play out today as Dan Petrie gets a start for Detroit. Uh, he's on the cusp of getting to 200 innings pitched, well beyond his uh, previous Major League career total high. Uh, all the bullpen is available except for Dave Smith, who came in and almost blew the save. And then our lineup versus Floyd Bannister Another lefty, back-to-back -back lefties, and this time we're going to stick our lefty bats back in there. So, Kenny Smith will be the DH. Terry Kennedy's back in there. Lou Whitaker's back in there. Um, we do have several batters listed as tired, but we're going to push on through. Okay, let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Detroit Tigers. Batting leadoff, playing center field is Willie o. Wilson. Batting second at shortstop is Alan Trammell. Batting third at third base is George Brett. Batting cleanup in left field is... What is happening here? We had a little bit of a delay. There's Kirk Gibson as our cleanup hitter in left field. Batting fifth in right field is Glenn Wilson. Batting sixth at first base is Rusty Tillman. Batting 7th and DHing is Kenny Smith. Batting 8th and catching is Terry Kennedy. And batting ninth is the second baseman, Sweet Lou Whitaker. Okay, Floyd Bannister on the mound, making his 34th start of the year. 17 and 13 with a 385 ERA, 169 strikeouts and 238 and a third innings pitched. Opponents are batting 249 against him, seven complete games. Two shutouts. Fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 42.9%. His fastball is his best pitch. It's rated in 84. A couple other off-speed pitches below league average. And his overall rating is only a 77. And yet he won a career-high 17 games this year. The 29-year-old left-hander is a free agent at the end of next year. And we have not played him this year, apparently. At least not in the last 20 games since we've been facing the American League West teams. He's won, wow, five out of six starts. And he's coming off a victory where he threw a complete game versus the Brew Crew. Uh, giving up two runs and four hits. Striking out six. So he's pitching pretty well down the stretch. Let's take a look at the defense for the Mariners. Third base today is uh, Dodd, so he's back in there. After having the game off yesterday, everybody else is at their normal position. Oh, no, we have a backup catcher in there. Oh, and he stinks. He's a stinky catcher. 
It's <laughs> Bob Stinson, who was out of baseball by 1980. This guy just gets a couple of bats every once in a while. Betting 181. He's got a 56 arm. Holy hell. I think Terry Kennedy is going to steal today. Anybody that gets on, if we get anybody on, is stealing every base we can get. Wait, we got to look at this a little closer. His fielding, 4%. Oh, no. That sucks. A defensive range of negative 15.9 and a defensive war of 1.6. His defense has cost him two victories this year, essentially. Ouch. Okay, here we go. Willie Wilson leading off. Oh, he's licking his chops. Hey, no! I thought that was going to get through. Ground ball to short. There's one down. Here's Trammell. Now, Trammell's 6 for 10 with a home run against Floyd Bannister in his career. Uh, ground ball to first. I can already feel it. It's going to be one of those games where it's a no-hitter for both teams. There we go, George Brett. Base hit to left. You know he's going to steal. What is the stolen base percentage? 75% for George Brett. With two down, I'll take those odds. Get him into scoring position for Gibby. Brett going in the first pitch. Lefty, lefty. And he does steal second base. That is his sixth stolen base of the year. That equals his total output from last year. Got to pad those stats for the contracts coming up. Okay, so Brett in scoring position for Gibson. This feels like a strikeout. Oh, one count, no. And a ground ball to short, and the play is made. So we can strand the runner in scoring position. We go to the bottom of the first. Let's take a look at the Mariners lineup. Batting leadoff and DHing is Dickey Schofield. Batting second at second base is Harold Reynolds. Batting third at first base is Alvin Davis. Batting cleanup in left field is Ricardo Sines. Batting fifth in right field is Alan Cockrell. Batting sixth at third base is Tom Dodd. Batting seventh in center field is Dave Henderson. Batting eighth at shortstop is Spike Owen. And batting ninth is today's catcher, Bob Stinson. Okay, Dan Petrie gets the start today. This is his 33rd start. 13-9 and nine with a 394 ERA, 121 strikeouts in 194 innings pitched. Opponents are betting 245 against him. He does have a complete game. Fastball tops out at 89 miles an hour. Ground ball percentage is 46.4%. His fastball is by far his best pitch. It's rated a 90. And a slider at an 82, overall an 88. The 25-year-old righty is a free agent at the end of the 86 season. Um, he's put together a couple of good starts in there. Um, he did have that A's start where he went two and a third, giving up three runs on six hits. A couple of dongs. He did not get the decision, though. Uh, he did win his last start, which was against the Twins. Uh, he went six innings, giving up two runs on six hits and two walks for his 13th victory of the year. Here's the Tigers' defense. It's all of our good guys, exactly where they belong. Terry Kennedy behind the plate. Okay, Dick Schofield leading off against Dan Petrie. Schofield popping it up to Whitaker, backpedaling into the outfield. For out number one, here is Harold Reynolds. Reynolds, he's got he's up there in stolen bases himself. As he strikes out looking. Two quick outs for Petrie and Alvin Davis. Dark horse MVP candidate. Gets a base hit to right. He will hold at first. Two down, runner on first for Ricardo Sines. Signs leading the team with 36 home runs. And Petrie blows it by him. 90 mile, 90 mile an hour fastball. For strike three, you go to the top of the second. Here is Glenn Wilson leading off. So, tell me this, with, with Stinson, 
Would it be better off if they just put like a second baseman behind the plate with a better arm? I mean, would a, would a player playing out of position behind the plate be better than the designated catcher position? I wonder. There's one out. Rusty Tillman flying out to center field. And Kenny Smith, a 2-2 count, strikes out. I don't think we're going to see a lot of hits today as we go to the bottom of the second. Here's Alan Cockrell leading off. That's a leadoff single as he bloops it into center. Tom Dodd had the day off yesterday, betting 252. Oh, he gets picked off! Petrie picks Cockrell off first. We'll take any out we can get. One two count now to Dodd, and he strikes out. Three Ks for Petrie. Morris struck out eight yesterday. One of the better strikeout performances we've seen this year. And Henderson hits a ground ball to second. We go to the top of the third. TK leading off. We've dropped uh, Kennedy down in the lineup. I don't fear that he'll get below 300 at this point, but I don't think he's going to get another hit. I'm a, oh, that's a line drive to left. I don't think he gets another hit all year. We might have to consider not even playing him in the playoffs if we get there. Here's Lou striking out. Second K for Bannister. And we're back to Willie. Flies out to center. Bottom of the third. Spike Owen leading off. Another Mariner batter who has double digits in home runs. He's got 11 and a base hit. So that's the second inning in a row where the leadoff man has got on. Let's see if Bob Stinson can uh, come through with his bat today. Oh, Spike Owen trying to steal, and he's gone down. That is, wow, he had 22 stolen bases last year. Only four this year. And he was just thrown out for the third time. So Seattle kind of running themselves out of this ball game. Petrie just left that curveball up high. 72 miles an hour way up there. And still, Stinson could not come around on it. Well, you don't want to make that mistake to Dickey. Dickey with the fourth hit against Petrie. I'd rather have hits than walks. You know, we've already discussed this numerous times. The whip total is whatever it's, it's going to be for this player, but it's always one or the other. Six walks and one hit or, you know, some bullshit like that that we're accustomed to. Will Schofield be going with two down? I'd send him. Harold Reynolds with a one-two count. Pops it up into foul ground. And that will do it. We go to the top of the fourth. Here's Trammell leading off. High fly ball to center. Yeah, I mean, we have to use the same strategy that we've been using during this four-game winning streak. Just hang in there until the levy finally breaks. There's a blooper for Brett. Oh, it falls in for a hit. Give him a double. Oh, nope. Well, we're going to... We'll have Brett steal again. He's already got one today. Fastball this time, and he is successful. Number seven on the year. George Brett doing it with the legs. Okay, let's see if Gibson can get him in. He's got a no-one count. Get some good wood on it. Brett will tag and go to third. He is safe. That was only a 70% chance. Oh, it was Henderson. I should have paused for a moment to think about that. Some risky decision-making there. Okay, here's Glenn Wilson. He's 0 for 1 today. Big Willie leading the team in RBI. We could use one right now. He's going to get it done! Into center field. All the way to the wall. Brett scores. Wilson... His 28th uh, uh, double of the year 
an 84th RBI. Good job by Glenn Wilson. A rough year for him, but he is uh, at least driving in the runs. Okay. So Wilson on second. Here's Rusty Tillman. 2-2 Two -two count. Off the end of the bat into right field. And that's out number three. So the Tigers are on the board. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning. And Alvin Davis will lead it off. He's one for one today. And I'm give him two for two. Wilson cuts it off, gets it in quickly. That's three innings in a row that the Mariners will let off with a hit. Now they've been thrown out every time. Picked off or, or thrown out by Kennedy. So we are just playing with fire. Signs flies out to center. One out. It's Alan Cockrell. And a wild pitch. So here's how they get their run. It's manufactured by the game engine, not, not because of actual circumstance. Cockrell with a fly ball to left. Out of curiosity, how many wild pitches does he have this year? A career-high nine, although he has pitched almost twice as many innings as he's ever thrown. Okay, Tom Dodd, he is the guy that's going to drive in the run. First pitch swing. Oh, he gets hit by a pitch. Fantastic. So now he's walked a guy and hit a batter. Third hit batter this year. And then Dave Henderson, three-run home run. Line drive to left. Gibby. Ooh, Tigers get out of the inning. Seemed like a surefire rally with two outs. But well, we shut it down. We go to the top of the fifth inning, and Kenny Smith will lead off. Kenny Smith does not hit lefties well, but I feel like now that the chips are down, we, we really got to have all of our best players in there. Struck out two times now. Two of the three batters have been Ken Smith. Kennedy also strikes out, and Whitaker lines up. That was an easy inning. Okay, we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. I don't mind Petrie giving up all these hits. No one has crossed the plate yet. It's when he starts walking, which will probably be this inning, uh, that, that shit goes sideways. Spike Owen, 0 for 2 today, or, or is he 2 for 2 today, popping it up. One down. Here's the catcher, Bob Stinson. Striking out. Stinky Stinson. That's the fourth K for Petrie. And we are back to Dickey. And the basic. So. Okay. Is there going to be a two-out rally? That is the question. We're going to guard the line. Um, man, I would definitely send Schofield. They're dumb enough to send Owen. That's who was thrown out. I mean, I would definitely send Schofield. First pitch, going. And he is successful. Damn it. All right, this is the fifth inning, so they have to get their run here. There's no reason to pull first base in other than, in my own mind, I feel like it goes against whatever the game might be thinking, but... If he's going to score, they're going to give him the hit here anyway. Yeah, I mean, there was nothing we could do about that. So it's all tied at one. And then the strikeout because the run scored. Running the wilds. All right, so the Mariners get their run. It's all tied at one. Top of the sixth. And finally, a hit by a guy with some speed and an error. By the left fielder, signs. So we might get that run right back. Now, you're, you may be thinking, why not steal third? 83%? I feel like we're going to score anyway. Unless Trammel strikes out, and then we're in trouble. 3-1. Okay, good job by Trammel. 
That will get Wilson over. They're going to pull the infield in. We're going to request a sack fly. This does feel like a strikeout or a pop-up, doesn't it? Here we go. 2-0 count to Britt. And he pops it up. Yeah, it was guaranteed. So we're not going to be scoring again today. That means we've lost this ball game. Yeah, yeah this game is over. That's fine. There's always tomorrow. So we'll just go ahead and get it over with now. That's an error by Kennedy. Oh, no, Kennedy's going to make the play. You know, like in these last few games, although so many things are predictable, some of the same old tropes are just not true. Like that should have been an error, absolutely, 100%. Oh, it was going to be followed with a double anyway. So we'll let them get their, their winning run here. It's two to one. Oh, no. Well, we'll pull the infield in for what it's worth. Henderson pops it up in the foul ground. Spike Owen, two for three today. We'll play regular depth. Pops it up. We're going to get out of it. If Whitaker can close the glove. Yep. Great. We go to the top of the seventh. And Glenn Wilson leading off. He pounds it into the dirt. Stinson. No, oh, he does make an error. He's the worst catcher in the game. I'm sorry, Wilson, but you got to come out. I'm yelling from the dugout. Wilson. All right. Um, yeah, Jeff Stone coming into the ball game. 96 rating, 85% chance. And Stone steals second. Eighty-five percent chance. One-zero -oh count. Curveball low. Stone steals third. They're pulling the infield in. We're going on contact. Two-zero -oh count. Two-one. Yes, pulled it infield. Stone scores, and it's two to one Detroit. We're punishing them for their terrible catching decisions. Full count. Ah, double play. Man, I thought he could try to do something right for us. All right, one down. Here's Kenny Smith trying to steal second. Curveball, and Smith gets his 11th. In scoring position for TK. As I said, Kennedy will not get another hit the rest of the year. And another error by the catcher. Okay, I, I'm, I've had enough. Like, let's like, at least try to make this realistic. We'll hit and run. Base hit, Smith scores. These are all unearned at this point. Wait, why is Kennedy not on third base? Bannister had 114 pitches, but not tired yet. What if we lay down a bunt? Didn't see that coming. Base hit. Yes. <laughs> Bases are loaded, and that will do it. They're going to bring in... Steve Olin, a rookie, just called up, making his major league debut at age 18 with the bases loaded. Probably not a wise decision. Um, yeah, he's not ready for prime time. And, of course, we all remember Steve Olin was in that boat in a Little Lake Nessie down there in uh, Claremont, Florida, where he, he got decapitated. That's what happened. All right, bases are loaded. Alan Trammell's up. 
0-1 count. Oh, side armor. And a base hit. Kennedy scores. Whitaker scores. Wilson holds at second. It's 5-1 Detroit. I still believe these are all unearned runs. Here's George Brett versus the 18-year-old. And he walks. Okay, that's the end of uh, that pitcher. They're going to bring in Brian Snyder. 27th, 20th appearance, no record, 421 ERA. 292 opponents batting average. He does have two pitches above league average, that's good. And he is a left-hander. Gibby likes the lefties. Let's get a fly ball. Oh, do better than that. That'll get two more in. It's 7-1 to one Detroit. Folks, if Boston loses today, the Tigers will win the division, right? They would be five out with four to go. Let's close the series out right now. Here is Jeff Stone batting for the second time. Well, no, we've made it through the lineup. He came in as a pinch runner. And he's going to get in at bat. Let's hit and run. 0-2. Oh, shit. And Gibson gets the stolen base. His 32nd of the year. Rusty Tillman with a 1-1 count. A slow roller to short, and that will do it. Tigers put a six spot on the board. It's seven to one. We'll take out Jeff Stone and put in Kevin Bass. That is his normal position in right field. Okay, we can definitely give Dan Petrie one more inning now. Bob Stinson, he's got some <laughs> got a lot of stuff to make up for in this game, but he grounds out to first. We're back to Dickey. Let's take a look at the in-game stats. Tigers have as many hits now as the Mariners. Things weren't looking so good, hot for us there for a while. Dick Schofield grounds out to second. And Harold Reynolds, one for three with an RBI. Oh, he's going to get a double out of this one. He was thinking three. 37th double of the year. He was an all-star this year, right? Yep, he sure was. I think Petrie has earned the right to get one more out. Even though it is a left-hander and it could be tough. 2-2 Two -two count to Al Davis. And a ground ball to third. Brett makes the play. And that will do it. We are going to the eighth inning. We're going to let Ken Smith bat. He's 0 for 3 today. He'd love to face a right-hander. Oh, God, he sucks versus lefties. One down. Here's Terry Kennedy. He strikes out again. And Lou walks. Now, we can't steal now. We're up six runs in the eighth inning. I would love to, but it's just not right. Did he strike out the side? He did. That's dumb. Okay, good job by Petrie. Looking to get his team leading 14th win. We're going to bring in Dave Rosma. You know what? I'm going to undo that. Because I might give Dave Rosma a start before the end of the season. So, we will bring in Frankie LaCourt. All right, here we go. Ricardo signs. There's a ground ball to short. Tremble. Throws him up. One down for Cockrell, and LaCourt walks Cockrell. He's the cock of the walk. Thank you. Thank you for the applause. Tom Dodd popping it up. 
Two down. And Dave Henderson. Hendu. Oh, he just crushed it. Two run home run for Henderson. He's 28th of the year. Makes it seven to three. That's their junk runs. We're not we're not overly concerned. Now I'm a little concerned. Bob Stinson strikes out. Okay. So the court walks to. He finally gets a strikeout. We go to the ninth inning, and it's Ed Vandenberg. 30th appearance, 1 and 2, 406 ERA. Posted by 266. That's a great walk to strikeout ratio. Seven saves, three blueies. His slider is his best pitch, rated in 85. Overall rated in 83, the 25 year old lefty is arbitration eligible at the end of the year. Here we go. Travel leading off in the ninth. A comebacker. One out. George Brett. Ground ball to second. And Gibby. Oh, Gibby gets all of it. That is his 100th run scored of the season. His 27th double uh, home run. It is his 27th. Great job by Gibby this year. With Kennedy kind of sliding down and, and Gibson... Uh, crushing it. That's his fourth home run in five games. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's incorrect. That's his third home run in five games. But his fourth in the last 20. That's not as impressive sounding. But wait, what was his... Uh, he's betting 313 down the stretch. So good job by Gibby. Get one of the runs back. And then Bass at his first at bat grounds out to second. Okay, we're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Oh, Lord. We'll bring in Montgomery. J-Mo facing Nicker. A one count. We could be three outs away from winning the division as Schofield gives it a ride to the warning track. There's one down. Two to go. Harold Reynolds. Oh, you son of a bitch. Oh, how is that not a double? Okay, they're down five runs. Alvin Davis, ground ball to short. And the Tigers turn two for the victory. Eight to three. We've won five in a row. Handshakes, butt slaps, snap mistakes. I'm thinking right now we won the division. Come on, give it to us. Yeah, we did it. There we go. The Tigers have won the American League East. We are going to the playoffs. That is good news. We can rest our crew. Let's take a look, first of all, at Boston. This might be an extended ending to this uh, video for today. So here's Boston, who just fell short with the best offense in probably years. Oh, actually, California batted 285. Boston batted 289. Um, yeah, I mean, Wade Boggs, MVP-like season. He's going to win the batting title. Unless he falls apart with Tarver. He's in second. Um, yeah, they don't have a lot of backups. Looks like Matthias Carrillo is going to get some start, some starts here in the last couple of games. Uh, but everybody who got to play this year played really well for this team. I mean, you don't, well, Dennis Littlejohn, who walks a ton, probably should not have been their catcher. It was supposed to be Gino Petrali. You may remember way back when, when he got injured. Um, Torres Achilles, Aaron Rodgers style. And uh, let's look at their pitching. And their pitching could never stay healthy. So many injuries this year. Everybody's healthy now. Um, 
and they've moved some pitchers into long relief to give Al Nipple Chips a shot and Dana Kiker, kicker, give him a shot in there. So, I know this team is not a bad team, but I, I don't know if they know who they are. In fact, they've actually put Mike Trujillo in there as their closer um, instead of Eckersley. I mean, maybe they're mixing it up now that they're out of it. I, I don't know, but but we could do that too. Let's take a look at our team. Yeah, we've got some tired players. We're going to make sure that everyone is properly rested. We're going to get the schlubs in. We're going to mix in some of these AAA guys. We, we want Barbaro Garbet to get in there because he was actually on the 84 Tigers team. So he's going to get some at-bats. Um, probably Rich Gedman will get a start at catcher because he got to play a little bit last year. Um, yeah, we'll take a look at the pitching. Let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, Browning will not make his start tomorrow. He's done. I think Jeff Robinson will probably go tomorrow. Since we skipped him, we will get uh, Dave Rosema a start. Brian Kelly, he's already pitched way more innings. Well, not way more, but a considerable amount more than he, he did um, last year. We will get Danny Jackson in there for a start. And then the final start of the year will be David Cohn making his major league debut. Um, and anyway, we'll, I'll mix up, um, I'll get the, the bullpen situated properly at another time. But So that's how we're going to finish up the last four starts. Robinson, well-deserved, gets one more start. Dave Rosma, we'll give him a start to see if he can maybe give us some starts next year if we need it. Danny Jackson will get one more start. He's been terrible. And David Cohn will get a made his major league debut on the final day of the season. Hey, congrats to us, man. That's awesome. Uh, it's going to be New York versus L.A. And California versus Detroit. All glamorous cities making the playoffs. Let's take a look at the headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. Tigers are the 1984 American League East champs. We did it, folks. Um, of course, this will delay our, um, our uh, 1970 Seattle Pilots uh, season, but that's fine. I'm not going to overlap like I did with the Tigers season and the Pilots season. That's how I got the, um, the uh, initials for the teams screwed up, the acronyms. So we're not going to do that. Uh, transactions. Uh, we Nothing of note. Okay, let's go ahead and pull up the box score and get out of here. Tigers are the American League East winners. Now I can give away the prizes on game 162 and feel good about it. Like we've earned that, that prize. Um, player of the game, I think we could give it to Dan Petrie. But Gibby had three RBI and a couple of hits, including a stolen base. He had a shoe and a shot. So he's got to get it. Um, a good performance uh, by Petrie. He did give up 10 hits. He didn't walk anybody, but that's, you know, we've already talked about how that works. LaCourt gave up a couple of runs, but he kind of had to. His ERA was already way too low. And Floyd Bannister takes a loss. Uh, five of his runs were unearned, so he doesn't care. His numbers don't look that bad. And the bullpen uh, was really not all that great, except for Brian Snyder. He struck out four of the five batters uh, that were outs for him. Okay, that's going to do it. We're going to come back tomorrow and play the final game of the series with uh, no stress whatsoever. Um, I'm happy for you guys. I'm happy for us. This has always been the goal is to get the 84 team to the playoffs and win the World Series. So that's what we got to do next. Get past the California Angels. I'm going to get Freddie out to California, have him do some scouting, and, uh, you know, get our, our pitching rotation set up for the playoffs and our batters rested. That is what we're going to do. So, until tomorrow, everyone, have a great day.